Point Loma is a section of San Diego highlighted on screen here. It's this piece of land that jets out towards the Pacific Ocean, and as a San Diego resident myself, I had always found it strange that I had never actually seen Point Loma. I'd sometimes think to myself, what exactly is over there? And after a few Google searches, there were two cool spots I discovered located within Point Loma that I want to share with you guys today. These are Cabrillo National Monument and Sunset Cliffs Natural Park. Cabrillo National Monument was our first destination of the day, located at the southern tip of the peninsula. I had no idea that my own home city of San Diego was home to a national monument or any natural NPS site for that matter. I've been carrying a national park pass for the past year, so there was nothing from stopping my parents and I from planning a visit this winter break. Cabrillo National Monument is a park all about history, commemorating the landing of Juan Cabrillo at San Diego Bay on September 28, 1542. This event marked the first time a European expedition had set foot on what later became the west coast of the United States. In addition to its designation as a national monument, it is also on the National Register of Historic Places. Admittedly, I'm not much of a history buff, so this alone wouldn't have been enough to get me all the way out here. However, the coastal views and tide pools certainly were. Learning about the history was just an added bonus on top of that. The park is divided by what I'd consider to be two halves. You've got the upper parking lot and the lower parking lot. The former is where we spent the most amount of time at and is home to Cabrillo National Monument's visitor center as well as its most recognizable architectural landmarks and the park's only major hiking trail. We started by taking in the views from the two most visited overlooks, one of which is located right where the famous Cabrillo statue is outlooking San Diego Bay. Visitors can look left to see San Diego's harbor and skyline, as well as the ocean water right in front of you. On clear days, you'll also be able to see the Mexican city of Tijuana and Mexico's Coronado Islands. The old Point Loma Lighthouse is the highest point in the park and has been a San Diego icon since 1955. It's cool to climb through the lighthouse's spiral staircase, seeing all of the well-preserved rooms, and if it's open, you can get a really cool view from the top. Next up was the Bayside Trail, which is a 2.4 mile out and back journey with a very nice payoff. As I said earlier on in the video, this is the only major trail located within the park, but it's a fun one and well worth doing since it isn't too difficult at all. It does go entirely downhill heading out, so you will have to walk uphill coming back. Keep that in mind if you're planning a visit and make sure to bring lots of water. The Bayside Trail hugs the water for the majority of the hike. It's a great spot if you love bird watching or boat watching. The payoff is a very tranquil overlook featuring dazzling blue and green water hitting a rocky beach. Though Cabrillo National Monument was quite busy during our visit, there weren't a whole lot of people on the Bayside Trail, which I really appreciated. Now earlier, I mentioned that the park was divided into two halves, an upper lot and a lower lot. If you head down to the lower lots, you'll be able to explore my favorite section of the park at the tide pools. Be sure to check the times the tide pools are most visible up at the visitor center. For us, it was best to explore from 1 to 4.30 p.m. and we were down there by around 2. There was no shortage of awesome wildlife greeting us at the bottom. From just the parking lot, it was easy to spot seals and sea lions bathing in the sun. They're by far one of my favorite things about the coastal areas of San Diego. Then you can take a nice short little trail down to the water to explore some tide pools. A lot of the cliff formations jetting into the ocean reminded me a lot of Torrey Pine State Reserve, which has always been one of my favorite spots in San Diego County. Easily my favorite part of Cabrillo National Monument was seeing all of these different creatures at the tide pools, including sea urchins, crabs, and lobsters. Enjoy the footage I got of the wildlife and always remember to leave them undisturbed as they're protected under federal law. Overall, I think there's a good argument to be made that Cabrillo National Monument is my new favorite spot in San Diego. There's lots to see and do here, from taking in the coastal views to discovering the history, hiking the Bayside Trail, and exploring the tide pools. I thoroughly enjoyed the park and I'd highly recommend a visit. That said, the date wasn't over yet as we had one more big stop to make at Sunset Cliffs Natural Park. Sure, the ocean views here are good, but it's nothing you can't find anywhere else in San Diego. The real reason we came on by was to see if we could get to the base of the Sunset Cliffs Cave. 
This is the largest open ceiling sea cave in San Diego, and frankly, from the top it just isn't anything special. It's entirely fenced off, and even if it weren't, the view would be mediocre at best. I had always heard that the vantage that you get from the bottom of the cave was otherworldly, so getting down there has always been on my San Diego bucket list. I attempted to do this in late 2021 thinking it would be relatively easy, but I was wrong. Getting to the bottom of the cave can be really dangerous, and you need to be knowledgeable about when to go if you attempt to do this. Getting to the bottom of the Sunset Cliffs cave absolutely requires a tide somewhere in the negatives. We visited when it was negative 1.6 and it was perfectly fine. Last time I came by and tried to do this, I hadn't done my research and we could have gotten very hurt before we decided to turn around and try it some other time. There's a handful of ways to get down to the bottom of the cave, but by far the easiest in my opinion is if you head to the tip of Luscombe's Point. This can be found directly to the right of the cave itself. Once you get to the end, you'll carefully climb to the bottom and rock hop until you've reached the beach adjacent to the cave. All right, the hardest part is done. We've made it down to the beach. One of the options is you can come down here, which we didn't do because that looks pretty dangerous. And then the other option is if the tide is low enough, when we're here, it's negative 1.6. I would definitely recommend a negative tide if you're coming to do this, but you can come to the end of Loose Gums or Less Gums Point and then uh, just walk down. It's not too difficult, but you may get your feet wet. From there, it's a super easy short walk to your destination. The Sunset Cliffs Cave is super unique and really cool from below. It's crazy to stand in the middle, look up, and admire the open ceiling. This isn't to mention that the entrance kind of looks like an arch formation in itself. Well, we made it into the sea cave. That's something I've wanted to do in San Diego for a long time. Finally, one of my bucket list items checked off. How cool is this? I've lived in San Diego, what, 45 years? Never seen this before. It's really <laughs> awesome. After taking in the cave, we enjoyed walking along the beaches and seeing some tighter, narrow caves before the tide started to become less favorable. Something that I noticed heading out was this really cool sea slug, which I had never seen in the wild before. This big black thing was a living creature and it would have been so easy to mistake it for a rock or something similar. But nevertheless, I'm really glad I got to see it and especially to gently touch its back and feel how slimy it is. We tried taking this tight cave heading back to Luscombe's Point, not really knowing where it would take us. We just followed a bunch of other people, partially because we wanted answers as to how it was so busy with people including many aged 7 to 10. I didn't understand how it was so possible for the youngsters to get down here considering how inaccessible it is. And even after making it all the way up by climbing these rocks, I was still left scratching my head. Either way, I'm glad lots of people were able to enjoy it. It's a cool spot that I'm glad I was finally able to check off my San Diego to-do list. To wrap up our day, we made a visit to a burger joint I had recently discovered called Ho Dad's. It's located in Ocean Beach, so it wasn't far out of the way to get back home for us. The place had a really wild vibe to it, but the food was delicious. I got a single cheeseburger for $9, and it was one of the best burgers I've had in a while. Then the sun began to set on an awesome day of exploration in Point Loma. If any of you live in San Diego or are looking to visit, I hope you'll use this video as a guide to help plan an exciting day. I have lots of other videos from San Diego County already up on the channel, and I hope to post more in 2023. If you haven't already, feel free to check out my videos from Torrey Pine State Reserve, Potato Chip Rock, and both episodes from Anza Borrego Desert State Park. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye, guys.